Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're taking a look at 16 hidden features that you will be able to find on your iPhone running iOS 16 that you probably didn't know existed. Now, of course, iOS is always packed with features and some of the coolest ones are actually hidden and most people don't know about. Let's get started with the first one. This goes to show how great iOS is. So let's say you're sending an email and you're supposed to attach some files, maybe some pictures, some documents, but you forgot to do that. Well, iOS won't let you do that. It will actually recognize that you have to send files when you type something like, here's the files that you asked for, this is what I typed. And a lot of times when you're typing something, you have a text to write on an email and attach files, you might just write the text and forget to attach the files. Well, iOS 16 won't let you do that. So if I say something like here, here are the files, I can go ahead and tap send, but you can see right there, it won't actually let me do that. It will show a pop-up which says that, did you mean to add an attachment? So right here, it gives you the option. It will remember you that you will actually have to add the files before sending the email. So you don't have to send the email twice. That's really great. And of course, if you don't have to attach files, you can just tap send anyway, or just tap cancel, go back and attach your files. Now, iOS 16 will do some really useful stuff. So let's say you take a screenshot of an email, of a phone number, anything on the screen that contains something that you might need, again, like a phone number or email or an address or something like that. If you take the screenshot just like this and you go ahead and tap on it, just tap the live text button, you can see it will recognize what's on that picture on that screenshot. And from here, I can just tap and go ahead and send an email or I can just hold there and it will show me a few different options. So I can go ahead and copy this email, add it to my contacts or even send a message or a new email directly from here. As you probably know on iOS 16, you can now copy and edit edits from a photo to another. You can actually do that even from a video to another video or from a photo to a video. That's really great. But what if you want to have the same edit on a bunch of photos? You don't want to go around and paste the edits on any, any of the photo because that will take, of course, a lot of time. What you can do is just go ahead and tap the three dots on the photo when you want to get the edits tap on copy edits, and then just go to the album where you have the photos to which you wanna paste the edits. Tap on select, and I can select all these photos right here, and I can just simply go ahead and paste the edit on all of these photos. Tap right there on the three dots, and I can paste the edits, and all the same edits will be on all of these photos. Now here is a Safari hidden feature. If you go to Safari and you go to your tabs view, what you can do right here, if you go to the search bar tab right there, you will get a cancel button. Now that button will cancel the search of course, but it also does something else if you tap and hold. So you tap and hold right there and it will give you the option to actually close all of the tabs that you have open. So you tap right there and all the tabs will be closed. Now, if you have a focus mode enabled and you have it attached to one of your lock screens, the cool thing that iOS does is that if you enable, in this case, I have this wallpaper attached to this updating updating focus that I have on my device. But one, one cool thing that iOS will do is that if you turn off the focus, you don't need to change the wallpaper back to the old one. So if I turn off the focus, you can see it will also switch the wallpaper to the older one that I had before, of course, enabling this focus. And it goes the same for enabling the focus. So anytime, of course, I enable the focus from here, it will just go back to the wallpaper to which this focus is attached. For the next feature, we're heading on to the settings app. Go to settings, accessibility, and then right here we'll have touch. And then you have tap or swipe to wait. Now this of course works only on devices, the newer devices, the iPhone 14 Pro series that of course have the always on display. Now what it does is that by tapping, you will turn on the screen of your device and it will of course unlock via face ID, but you will have to still swipe up to go into the home screen. If you enable this, then what you can do is actually just swipe up and it will just recognize face ID here and go directly into the home screen. You don't have to tap to wake up the device first. All you have to do is just swipe and it goes straight to the home screen. 
As you probably know, on iOS, we have a feature called tab back on iMessage. So you double tap on any message and you can actually react to that message. Now, this is what the user will receive on the other end, of course, if they have iMessage. But if they don't, they have the simple SMS, the green bubble. You can actually still react to that message. They won't get this view, but they will know that you have reacted with that thing to their message. One of the cool new features of the lock screen on iOS 16 is the ability to add shuffle photos. So you just choose a bunch of photos and you can cycle through them on your lock screen. Well, if you have one of your lock screens set up like that and you want to edit those photos, you don't have to actually create a new one. Just go to the edit mode and tap right here. What this allows you to do is add new photos, but you can also actually delete them. You will have the select button. You can just select any photos that you want to remove here from that shuffle group of photos and you can just remove them like that so you don't have to create a new lock screen every time you want to edit your shuffle photos. Now the same goes for changing the lock screen wallpaper as well. I see a lot of people when they want to have a new wallpaper, they will just tap here and create a totally new lock screen. Even though you might have your widgets and everything set up on the lock screen, you will have to create a new one but you don't actually have to do that. If you just want to have a new wallpaper, all you have to do is go to the edit mode, tap on customize, lock screen, tap here, it sends you to a library and you just will be able to choose any other picture you want. On the weather app on iOS 16, you will be able to see of course here the hourly forecast. But what's really cool is that you will have here the forecast for the next 10 days and you can even see the hourly forecast for each of these days. So we're going on day 10 right there, tap on it, you will see this chart and from here you can actually just move around and you can see the hourly forecast in exact hours and minutes right there for any of the days that you choose for the next 10 days. Of course, you can switch right there, don't have to go back and just slide like this and you will see the exact forecast for that exact day and time. On iOS 16, on the calendar app, you will now be able to actually copy and paste events. If you want to have the same event on different days, you don't have to recreate the same event over and over again. All you have to do is just go ahead, 3D touch in the event and tap on copy. And when you go back, you can go to another date. And if I tap the plus button right here, you can see it says that it's copied on my clipboard. So if I just want to add the same event, I tap right there and there it goes. You will have the same event just pasted without having to actually recreate it. The next trick has to do with the dynamic island. So if you have a device with the dynamic island, you need to enable this feature right here. Go under accessibility, go to touch and make sure you have enabled reachability. What this allows you to do is that it allows you to actually reach the dynamic island easier. So if you have something on the dynamic island, you can just swipe here and it will bring back the screen, bring down the screen, but it will also bring down the dynamic island alongside the screen. And of course you can go ahead and do anything just like normally you would with the dynamic island. Now with the dynamic island, when you have music or anything playing there, of course you know that you can touch right there and it will expand and will show you all the controls. But if you just want to quickly go to the now playing app or whatever you have there, you simply tap once and it takes you directly into the app and it has this like really nice animation where the app comes down from the dynamic island right there. You can see that's really, really cool. On the files app on iOS 16, if you have files that you need to send on an email or just transfer, and you might think they are big in size, you want to have them on a smaller size like a PDF, for example, all you have to do is just read really the touch on it. And it will show you quick actions. What you can do from here is tap optimize file size, and now it will make that file actually smaller in size. So we have here 3.4 while it just did it on 1.4. That's really, really great. It will just cut in half the size of the file. Now I know a lot of people might know about this feature I'm about to show you guys, but there are probably a lot of those who also forgot that this feature exists on iOS. Whenever you're using Safari, you need to refresh your page. Don't reach for that button right there. Just simply swipe down. You will hear a haptic feedback on your device. Just like that, you can refresh your web page. 
And last but not least, on iMessage, you want to send a voice message. Previously, you had to tap here and tap and hold to record. Now, with iOS 16, you no longer need to hold that button. You simply tap on it and you can start talking anything you want. You don't have to hold the button. And as you can see, it's actually recording. Once it's done with that, you tap again here and you're good to go. So that's basically it for this video, guys. These are 16 hidden features of iOS 16 that I believe every iPhone user must know. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you on the next one.